So let us start. Today's current affairs. What is IMBEX? I M B A X. IMBEX is a six day joint army exercise between India and Myanmar. IMBEX is a six day joint army exercise between India and Myanmar. Generally, the army exercises, military exercises, naval exercises between India and other countries are the most probable questions in civil services. For example, Haat Se Haat, hand in hand with China, Varuna with France, Indra with Russia. So we will have a lot of joint exercises which are important for the exam. When a new exercise takes place, kindly follow it. This time it is IMBEX, I-M-B-A-X, India and Myanmar. Next important current affair today is India's judge Dalvir Bandari have become the member in ICJ, a judge in ICJ. His tenure gets continued up to 2027, 2027, almost nine years. Here, the winning of Dalvir Bandari is, is historic. The reason is, India had a diplomatic victory over Britain. India had a diplomatic victory over Britain here. For the first time after seven decades, for the first time after seven decades, the International Court of Justice had seen this difference where a UNSC member losing its seat for an ordinary member, for an ordinary member. And uh, Britain from last many decades continuously had a judge. This time, this time, its judge, Britain have withdrawn at the final round. The reason is, it did not get support even from the Security Council and India got support from General Assembly. India got support from General Assembly. So this is a historic for India. Coming to ICJ International Court of Justice, there will be 15 judges in the court. There will be 15 judges in the court. For every three years, five will retire. For every three years, five will retire. The tenure of each judge is nine years. The tenure of each judge is nine years. No two judges shall be from the same country. No two judges shall be from the same country. The International Court of Justice is the principal judicial organ of the UNO. The International Court of Justice is the principal judicial organ of the UNO. Recently, there is a news about International Criminal Court. We should not get confused between International Criminal Court and International Court of Justice. Though both are located at Hague, Netherlands, Though both of ICC and ICJ located at Hague, Netherlands, ICC is formed with a different statute called Rome Statute. International Criminal Court is formed with a Rome Statute. Whereas International Court of Justice is a principal judicial organ of the UNO. Earlier, under League of Nations, there was permanent court of international arbitration. International Court of Justice stepped into the shoes of International Court of Justice stepped into the shoes of Permanent Court of International Arbitration. So, ICJ and its organs, particularly the headquarters of ICJ, the membership, 15 judges, tenure is 9 years, 
for every three years five will retire and the official languages of the international court of justice are english and french the official languages of international court of justice are english and french and the judgment given by icj the judgments given by icj are binding with respect to the particular parties and only with respect to the particular case the judgments given by the icj are binding with respect to the particular parties and with respect to the particular case if you see india supreme court judges or other judgments given by various courts in various countries the other judgments given by various courts in various countries the judgments will have binding effect on the lower courts whereas the judgment given by icj do not carry binding effect in the future cases the judgment will be applicable only with respect to the particular case and only with respect to the particular issue and particular parties it does not have any binding effect this is the difference between normal courts and international court of justice and international court of justice remember this so icj is very important next important current affairs is in the infrastructure generally we have many items like transport social infrastructure like health education all those things recently logistics logistics was added in the definition of infrastructure so from now on logistics can also be called as infrastructure okay very important current affairs logistics recently got added as a part of infrastructure okay apart from that in today's newspaper as you all know few months back supreme court said triple talaq instant triple talaq instant triple talaq or talaqi bidat is against the constitutional principles and the supreme court declared it as unconstitutional and today yesterday supreme the government have constituted a committee ministerial committee to make a law if some person commits talaqi bidat what should be the penal provision for him what should be the punishment for him what should be the punishment for him this is a widely discussed topic now a ministerial committee was constituted on this apart from that today today's newspaper carries two important articles today's newspaper carries two important articles on rahul gandhi on rahul gandhi see to go up to number 1 in party family support is needed for him and family support he had because of dynastic politics we have in many political parties in the congress also because of family support he can go up to the chief of the party but to claim himself to prove himself as a prime minister material particularly to the country like india size of the country like india he need to prove the metal in his efficiency he need to prove the metal in his efficiency here in the article in the editorial today in hindu there is one mention about rahul gandhi which i remember what happened in 2013 very interesting news might be most of you are not following at that time i'll tell that particular issue there is a case called lilly thomas case in 2013 there is a case called lilly thomas case in 2013 where the historic judgment was given by the supreme court and said section 8 clause 4 section 8 clause 4 of representation of people's act 1951 to that extent is invalid what is the section 8 clause 4 if a legislator mp or an mla gets convicted by a lower court if he appeals to a higher court within 3 months if he appeals to the higher court within 3 months he he will not get disqualified he will not get disqualified generally what the convicted legislators will do they will appeal to the higher courts so in courts we all know our justice delivery system it will take years it will take years to get the judgments so most of the ministers go scot free most of the ministers mlas mps got go scot free but in lilly thomas case the court told when the legislators are convicted for more than 2 years for any offense even they file an appeal they should vacate their seat they should vacate their seat if you could remember in 2013 jailalta vacating her cm post and giving way to pallis that uh, panir selvam 
giving way to Paneer Selvam to become the CM because of Lily Thomas and Jan Chowkidari judgments. At that time, the UPA2 government is in ruling. When this judgment came, the ruling party is UPA2, the ruling coalition is UPA2. The UPA2 coalition wanted to bring an ordinance against this judgment, protecting the legislators. The coalition wanted to bring an ordinance against this and almost draft was prepared, everything was done. At that time, Rahul Gandhi came forward and told, this is wrong. Supreme Court judgment is right, passing this ordinance is wrong, promulgating this ordinance is wrong. He assured that, though he is in the government, that when there are some ethics in politicians, when they need to follow certain ethics, they should follow and he, he has not shielded the criminal politicians, MPs and MLAs by supporting the ordinance. In fact, he is the reason why the ordinance was stalled. He is a major reason why the ordinance was stalled. Indirectly, the article mentioned about his, this particular aspect of Rahul Gandhi, which showed him. And Rahul Gandhi first time won the elections from Amedi in 2004. In 2004, he directly participated from Amedi. From 2004 to till date, he was doing very well in thing, but he was still like a young boy in politics. He need to play much more mature politics because it is not Rahul Gandhi that counts, but now if he is leading INC, it is INC that is going to count. And the second article says, it is a time for him to boost the morale of Congress. Go get her attitude. We can do attitude. Let us see what how he is going to perform in 2019 elections. But still, but still Rahul Gandhi has to prove a lot from a family person to from a person who's, is, who got support from the family to the chief of a political party to a winnable candidate in elections. Not as an MP, but who has to lead the entire political party, which has a historical uh, significance from 1885 to till date. Uh, from 1885, the Indian National Congress was formed in 1885 till date, carrying the legacy itself is a big task. Carrying the legacy itself is a big task for Rahul Gandhi now. Let, we have to wait and see. This is a very important article. And next article is about Nepalese constitution. Next article is about Nepalese constitution. And uh, as you all know, in 2015, Nepal got a new constitution. Nepal has a history of monarchy. 240 years old monarchy and in 1990 there was a strong agitation against monarchy and 240 years old monarchy have come down and slowly Maoists have risen. For one and a half decade almost Maoists showed their strength in Nepal and they also formed political parties. The problem in Nepal's new constitution is in 2015 there are people who are re re uh, relying, who are living in Terai region, who are living in Terai region, also called as Madeshis, also called as Janjatis. They are considered as half Indians. They are considered as half Indians. They have marital links with India. They have <coughs> relationships with India. And almost they are the part of India. Almost they are the part of India. The thing is, in the new constitution, Madeshis have not been given a proper citizenship status, primary citizenship status and proper role in the entire system. That is the reason why Madeshi started agitating, agitating in the Terai region in 2015. Because of compulsion, India has to support because Madeshis are mostly the part of, they have good relationship with India. So India started supporting Madeshi's cause and asked the Nepal to give equal status in their constitution. Nepal's new constitution is modern in many sense, in many regards. One is, it is a federal republic now. Number one, Nepal is a federal republic. Number two, Nepal is a secular state now. And cow is a holy animal in Nepal. Even the modern notion of LGBT rights, the modern notion of LGBT rights was recognized in Nepal. So Nepal's new constitution, a federal setup, a republican setup, and a multi-party democracy. For Nepal approved for multi-party democracy. That means many parties can exist. In spite of all these things, the treatment of Madeshis and Janjatis is a cause of concern for India. It's a cause of concern for India. But Nepalis and some of the Nepalis media contended that India is intruding into Nepal's internal affairs. India is intruding into Nepal's internal affairs. So this is one aspect. 
Now Nepal is going to elections. On 26th and December first week, second week, Nepal is going to elections. Let us see the new Prime Minister relationship with India and how Nepal is and Nepal and India relations go on. In the wake of growing Chinese influence in the Nepal region and international pressure in the Nepal region. And uh, second aspect in Nepal is Maoism. Though Maoism got receded in its violent sense, they are not completely demilitarized. They are not completely stopped their usage of weapons and violence. So still the links of Nepalese Maoists to Indian Maoists is also a cause of concern for India. The link of Nepalese Maoists and India, Indian Maoists are also a cause of concern for India. And uh, the Chinese factor in Nepal, Maoism in Nepal, Madeshi issue with Nepal and you all know Nepal is a member in SARC, South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. Nepal is also a member in BIMSTEC, Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation, BIMSTEC. So, neighborhood should be good always and uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi after becoming PM first visited to Bhutan then in 2014 itself he also visited to Nepal. Nepal is needed for India and uh, in uh, three, three months back Nepalese president Mrs. Bandari also came to India for a very good uh, visit. She stayed for a long time this time. So a very good thing. But let us see how Indo-Nepalese relations are going to turn in future with this new elections and new setup. But still India has its own objections on Nepalese constitution. As you all know, Madeshi's interest is India's interest. And India asked Madeshi's to deal the issue peacefully. And the division of provinces in Nepal, the division of provinces in Nepal made Madeshi's minority in all the provinces. Made Madeshi's minority in all the provisions. So that is a problem. Madeshi's have become minority in all the provinces. So their strength though exists, but they can, it cannot determine the election results completely. That is their complaint. So this is the issue of Nepal. Apart from that, you have one more article on Charles Manson. Charles Manson is a serious killer and uh, he killed many persons and inspired many persons to kill others in America, California. In 1969, he was very notorious and after it, he was arrested and put into jail and now in the jail he died. It's a time for rejoice in America because Charles Manson himself is, is not just himself a killer. He inspired many killers who were who have some psychological problems, inferiority complex, uh, destitute women, all the people. And uh, there's a term called Manson's family who, in, who got inspired by Manson. That's it. That's enough. And the last and most important article today is on Smart India and the entire interview with Harpreet Hardeep Puri, Hardeep Puri, Minister of State for Urban Development, Hardeep Puri. So let us discuss various issues which the interview covers. The first thing is about, <coughs> the question is about 80% of funds under Smart India Mission. 80% of funds under Smart India Mission are covering only 2.7% of the area. Why? This is a question. That is the right question. See, in Smart India Mission, the entire city is not becoming smart. They are retrofitting some area of the city, around 500 acres of the city, to make it world class, to attract it uh, and make it as a world class. That is the first thing. But the minister told, it is not just Smart India that is going on, it is Amrut, it is Prasad and also we have one more scheme called Hrudai. These three schemes are actually working supplementary to smart city mission. Urban rejuvenation and development, heritage city rejuvenation and pilgrimage development, these three schemes. Amrut is about urban rejuvenation, Hrudai is about heritage city development and Prasad is about pilgrimage rejuvenation. All these schemes are working together along with smart city missions to make Indian cities very smart. This is the first thing he has discussed. And Swachh Bharat, as you all know, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan started three years back to make India ODF, open defecation free by 2019, October 2nd. By 2019, October 2nd, the aim of Swachh Bharat mission is to make India 
ODF, open defecation free. This is one thing which you have to remember. The thing is, Swachh Bharat Mission is an ambitious project. Till now, government has spent around 60,000 crores on Swachh Bharat Mission. There are two, Swachh Bharat Rural, Swachh Bharat Urban. In the interview, this is also covered. More funding is given to Swachh Bharat Rural and less funding is given to Swachh Bharat Urban. More funding is given to Swachh Bharat Rural and less funding is given to Swachh Bharat Urban. The thing is, in Swachh Bharat Urban, urban uh, areas are covered under many missions like Amrut, like Hrudai, all those things. But Swachh Bharat Rural needs more funding, that is, that is there. And uh, there was a talk about toilets in India. Toilet construction is one of the important component in Swachh Bharat Mission. Toilet construction is one of the important component in Swachh Bharat Mission. In this toilet construction, the minister told more than 40 lakh toilets were constructed out of 68 lakh toilets which were aimed. More than 40 lakh toilets were constructed than uh, out of 68 lakh toilets that were aimed. The other, the interviewer asked the question, so construction of toilets is okay. But what about the maintenance of toilets? Somebody has to maintain the toilets. It's not that you have to. So those who have taken up the construction should also take up the maintenance. But I personally disagree with this. At least maintenance part, if you leave to, leave to the people, they have to ensure that their own belongings should be hygiene and clean. It is not just about money. It is not just about funding. It is about the commitment of the people for their hygiene and health. The awareness about hygiene and health is more important than funding. Always money cannot do all the things. Even Swachibars, for example, cleaning the floor in your house or cleaning the road in front of your house cannot be the uh, funding affair. Nobody can fund for it. That is your own duty as a citizen of India. As a citizen of India, that is our duty to clean our own floors. As uh, Mother Teresa told, as Mother Teresa told, if everybody cleans their doorstep, the entire city will be clean. If everybody cleans their doorstep, the entire city will be clean. Apart from that, we have Swachh Bharat app, where the discussion have come. In that app, you can take photographs, you can send it, and uh, you can show where are the problems in that. And one more concept that was discussed here is Swachh Bharat Satyagrahis. Like we have Satyagrahis, we have Swachh Grahis, who aim, who offer to follow Swachh Bharat. Like we have Satyagrahis during the freedom struggle, we can also have Swachh Grahis, the people who promise to fo follow the Swachh Bharat, cleanliness, as Gandhi told, cleanliness is next to godliness, almost. And uh, in the article, in the article, there was a discussion about private participation in urban development. Yes, because of the needs, vast needs in infrastructure, technology and funding, private participation and PPP model will work wonders in development of cities. The participation of private people and private investments, private companies will work wonders with respect to technology, with respect to funding. It is not that just government will do everything. Government will not do anything, will do every, everything because depending on a government and each and everything will be futile, will be futile. There should be some participation also from voluntary organizations, from PPPs, from private partnership, everyone, because they can do a better service to the country in a way. An next important thing in the article, there was discussion about RERA, Real Estate Recent Regulatory Act. Actually, Real Estate, Real Estate Regulatory Authority in the state level, states has to follow certain norms in real estate constructions. Till now, till recently, till last year, real estate is a sector which was completely unregulated. Last year, in 2016, Real Estate Act have come, which regulates the real estate business and construction. For example, the act will apply for every construction which goes more than 500 square, 500 square yards. And more importantly, in this act, there was a thing called minimum eight apartments. More than eight apartments, if they construct, the act will apply. And the act also defines what is carpet area, what should be the position of the funding, what is the completion timings, what is the commitment of the buyers, what is the commitment of the sellers. and registration of all real estate companies, all these things, the act regulated everything. The act have become a very big hiccup, very big, big problem to the real estate owners today, real estate regulatory act. And the, act, uh, the article also discussed about that. And apart from that, the article also said 75% of urban municipal waste 
is going without any type of untreatment. 75 percent of urban municipal waste is now going without any treatment. That is a major problem. With untreated municipal waste will affect the hygiene, the entire environment and it will, it will cause the pollution in all levels. So, 75 percent of the urban municipal waste officially is going untreated. This is a serious issue which you have to take care of. And the article also discussed about the concept on Safai Karmacharis. The other asked the question, with the increasing of the construction of toilets, Safai Karmacharis are also increasing. But this is not a right question according to me because government have taken many steps. Safai Karmachari, Manual Scavenging Act, manu Abolition of Manual Scavenging Act, prohibited seriously. But one thing, government can make a penal provision, government can implement strictly the law and order. But the problem with the government is, it cannot intrude into all social domains. In spite of government's prohibition, if people are ready to work, in each and every domain, how government has to stop. As you all know, manual scavenging is a heinous human rights problem. People should take a call on that. People should take a call on that. And uh, recently, last year, Raman Magsis Award winner, Bejavada Wilson, Bejavada Wilson, he started Safai Karmachali, Karmachali Andolan. NGO should come forward. People should come forward. Young people, young civil servants should come forward to end the Safai Karmacharis rather than always questioning the government how to end it. Government has done its task. It is up to us now we have to do that. And apart from that, the article also wrote a very interesting point. According to McKinsey's, uh, McKinsey's report, uh, India in uh, urban infrastructure, in urban infrastructure per capita, it is spending $17 per capita. Whereas, China is spending $116 per capita in developing urban infrastructure. This is the difference. This is the difference. India is spending for urban infrastructure per capita $17, whereas China is spending $116. This itself shows, this itself shows the difference which we have to make in India. We need to increase urban funding. At the same time, we also need to increase the awareness of the people in cleanliness and development of urban infrastructure. Then automatically, India will become a very good place to live in. Already India is a good place to live in and still India will become a much more better place to live in.